Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan, and I'm going to need your help on this one today. I'm really excited uh, to, to bring this one to you and to hear all of your feedback, and that's really what I'm going to need a lot of, um, because this is very different from most of the Rockwoods that you tend to see from us here at Halo RV. Like I, I mentioned uh, in a lot of my videos how they have a, uh, like a, a chocolate or champagne exterior, they have a darker interior uh, option, but you don't get to see a lot of that. And really, this RV is going to be in so many ways almost the complete inverse versus what you normally see out of our Rockwoods. Um, and it's, it's not that it's necessarily a new floor plan, it's just that it's a very different floor plan from what you normally see out of these guys and us. And here's what I mean. Um, uh, first of all, it's a beautiful private bunkhouse with like an L loft. It's very different. The, the rear room in this, um, I think, could potentially be an office conversion, but more than that, I think this one actually interestingly doubles as a laundry room because this has a very rare rear wall washer dryer hookup, which keep that logged in the memory banks. We're going to come back and talk about that in a little bit. I've got a little bit of a cautionary note for you about that, actually. Um, the, uh, uh, the interior look, the exterior look is totally different, and this is one of those floor plans that you have more options than normal in terms of how would you go about setting up the seating on this and I am very, very interested to hearing some consumer feedback because this is one of those models that I don't think there's one ideal way to build it for the most people. I think that this is one of those that's going to not even be a 50-50 split. I can see three groups of people each buying this in equal thirds. And uh, as we go, like I said, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions and I'm really relying on you guys to give me some feedback. Now, of course, being a Rockwood, it has that amazing fit and finish. We've got it decked out with the auto leveling. But again, we're going to look at uh, the highs and the lows of this thing. I'm going to show you where it really succeeds, where it kind of has a couple areas that you're going to want to pay attention to and consider before you pull the trigger. And if you like that kind of fair information, make sure you hit that subscribe button and catch us on the next one too. So I don't really know which way to start which way to go on this one but uh just to, we got to start somewhere so i'm going to start in the bunk room facing forward uh you see the uh upper deck hallway right there to the bedroom and bathroom and before we get too far along because i'm going to start very quickly asking for a lot of feedback here is uh I, I i want to draw attention to the fact that rockwood is one of the very few that is actually putting privacy shades in that entry door which is it's it's crazy to me that that is so so uncommon now, um, there are multiple different seating arrangements available on this bad boy, and which one works best for you, I think, is really going to be determined uh, by how greatly uh, you, know, you value the view of the entertainment center. Now, what we're looking at here today, just to kind of establish a baseline, this is the base, like, standard factory build. It is actually a trifold sleeper sofa along with that big, like, seven-foot true U dinette right there. Now, the, the question is, you have the ability to put a theater seat over here in the slide in place of the dinette, uh, a, a, along with a free-floating table. You also have the ability to put a theater seat over here. You don't have the ability to flip-flop the dinette and the sofa, though. There's not enough space to do that, and that is one of the reasons I'm asking for so much feedback. Now, from the sofa, you look at that and you say, yeah. But that is an absolute neck wrecker entertainment center. But the thing is, they've kind of thought of that a little bit. Because instead of a televator, what they did is they put this on a double swing arm mount. So if you want to make it face the sofa, you can. Otherwise, like if this was a televator, you would only really have direct viewing from the position of the theater seat. Now, the benefit of the televator is that you can put a, uh, which, by the way, a power up-down television. The benefit of the televator is that um, you can put a big extra door side window over there, which sounds great. But if your, your focus is really on entertainment, the television function, chances are the TV would have been blocking the window where that televator would pop up and down uh, anyway. And the way that Rockwood's done this here, it gives you a little more flexibility in your seating, in your viewing uh, potential and entertainment pleasure, while also you'll see when we go outside giving us a little bit of bonus storage. We're going to start right here. When you get the dinette, you get the double easy access drawers. The rear bench has exterior slide face access, but look at what they're doing here. Everybody and their brother said, I wish Rockwood would get rid of the carpet. They're listening. They're rolling through their entire lineup, model by model, 
peeling the carpet out of these things individually, basically starting with their fifth wheels and working their way down from biggest to smallest. That table again is totally free floating. It can fold down into the sleeper like you saw. Now this over here actually really surprised me. When I ordered this RV, the 12 volt refrigerator that we're looking at, they said was not available. Only the gas electric two-way fridge was available. And I was like, well, I don't understand what gives guys. Well, they looked at it and said, you know, you're right. So we have this one built today with that 12 volt compressor fridge and a 190 watt roof solar package and thousand watt inverter. Now, speaking of uh, inverter uh, function, multiple outlets through this RV, like six or eight of them, are actually wired to that inverter loop so that if you want to be uh, off grid and run something like, um, you know, so, some stand fans or something like that to keep the air moving in here, that is something that you can do with this one as a result. Um, the uh, countertops in this, they're all uh, solid surface and you will see that this thing has just intense, immense prep space but again the kitchen capacity is far more than you realize now you definitely want to plan on buying like a one or two step stool with this rv to be able to access all of this upper storage cabinetry space but the fact is this has an incredible amount of cabinet space some of it's just up a little higher because they have things like countertops and and uh uh what am i wanting to say here um entertainment down below that and once again circling back around you see that we have that uh big big cabinet all three sections of that actually are shelved to really maximize your storage space and in case you've noticed that's actually a recurring trend here is it's not just big cabinetry it is big capacity big potential now uh over here in the microwave i realized i scanned right past that that is about 50 percent larger than a standard uh microwave and a fifth wheel this size that can actually hold a real sized dinner plate and the oven if you are a campsite cook you're gonna like this thing because that right there is a larger 22 inch oven and i love that they give us a full drawer down below it but one of the other things i really like here is uh they come with this absolutely absurdly sized forest river like laser etched monster spatula job here which uh has a barley popinator on the end of it so you can pop the top off a cold one here and there the sportula as it's called but the thing is you, you might not realize it this one device actually um serves several different purposes in the rv turns out this thing can be used uh, equally well for doing things like flipping burgers uh, off the grill or griddle that's included with this RV, as it were. Uh, it is also an effective deterrent for gas station murder hobos who come into your campsite. Uh, the lawyers have asked that I tell you the Sportula is not intended uh, for the uh, you know physical combat of gas station murder hobos and is not rated for such. Using it in that way would void the warranty on the Sportula, so be advised, I guess. Okay, now one last note here before we jump back to the bunk room. This is the uh, the new autumn wood, darker wood tone. Like Rockwood has a lighter wood tone called Newport Ash. And this is also the uh, little bit darker chocolate fabric decor as opposed to the lighter stone fabric decor. So you could get the exact same RV built the exact same way that looks completely differently in here. And there's so much cabinetry and woodwork in this one that I think it would have a massive, massive effect. Now, the slide really does help open it up nicely. But again, I would be very open to feedback, you know, and, and you can mix and match those. The Newport Ash and the Stone are not locked in with one another. You could do Newport and Chocolate. You could do Autumn Wood and Stone. I've not really seen a Rockwood combination that doesn't look great. Now, this is wide open, but if you spy over there on the left, you can see a little bit of that pocket privacy door kind of peeking out right over here. And this is a different but very cool room that they have put together over here. So first of all, that is what I'm going to call like a, a big kid bunk. I don't know that it's necessarily double width. It's kind of an irregular size, but um, it fits over both the outside camp kitchen as well as some storage. And then when we go up here, it's not just an L bunk. In a way, it's like, an L bunk and a loft had a baby, but I love how they have that like don't roll out of bed safety gate like built right into this thing. That's not detachable. You don't have to worry about that. Um, the only place where you don't find that is over here where the ladder would be located. But something I want to throw at you guys. Um, these side bunks over here, these are typically about 72 inches long. I haven't had the opportunity to measure this one yet. And if you need specific measurements on anything, know that you call our team. We'll jump out here with a tape measure. We'll verify something for you. 
but this entire upper rear wall is one long bed. So if you have a big kid or adult friends who might come with you, they actually have a nice long place that they could sleep. Plus there's the high to bed, plus there's that u dinette, depending on how you equip it. And Rockwood doing Rockwood things, they go ahead and include a ladder where so many people do not. Now, as usual, one of the things that I like to do is let's go ahead and acknowledge things that we see, the potential points of concern. This does use floor ducted heating, and there's no way to be able to relocate those vents. When you use floor ducted heating, everything runs off of one straight line heat plenum, one run, basically. So they don't always have the greatest of choice as to where exactly those vents fall. Now, they are a little more effective in terms of total heating uh, ability, so there's that sort of benefit to them, but it also means sometimes they fall where you don't like them. I would probably put like a little throw rug back in here unless it's really darn cold out and we're running the furnace. Um, so TV hookups over here in the wall, if you want to bracket a TV on the wall. I like how it's not necessarily located all the way up to the ceiling, though. Um, the uh, TV hookups, the, the, the wiring is obviously right below the ladder location. And in a way, that's kind of one of those things where sometimes Rockwood doing Rockwood things becomes a hiccup. Sometimes they do so many features, they sort of overlap and get in their way a little bit, but at least they did them and didn't leave you, like, they, they didn't leave out the ladder. How else would you throw somebody into that upper bunk, you know? But this right here, this is something I'm very, very interested to hear some feedback on. Because when you first look at this, like, you see how it's got a hanging rack up top. Those are all removable shelves. You look at that, you're like, holy crap, Batman, that's a mega chunk of storage right there. And you look at that and say, wow, that is perfectly sized. Why don't they put washer-dryer hookups in there? The thing is, they did, but, and there's a big but that goes along with this one. This right here, this is one of those use-at-your-own-risk kind of things. And what I'm getting at, the reason you almost never see a rear wall washer-dryer hookup is the washer-dryer manufacturers themselves do not recommend installing a washer and dryer on the rear wall of an RV. It's all the way behind the axles, and it bounces so much it can actually cause damage to the, uh, the drum mechanism in those washer-dryer units. So it's here. It's available. It's pretty much recommended mostly like if you're going to leave the RV parked somewhere or only tow short distances. If you're planning to like full-time in this and bounce all around the country, that may actually cause some issues with this unit back here. Now, a lot of people wouldn't take the time to explain that to you. A lot of people would just say, it's washer dryer prep. We'll go ahead and install one and you can pay us for it. And certainly you can, but we will take the time and effort to tell you the good with the bad so that you can make a better, more educated decision here at Halet RV. That is absolutely always our goal to help you find your second camper the first time around. Now, apologies for jumping around a little bit more than usual. Uh, this is a very atypical floor plan, and I really felt I had to go about it in a very atypical way. Um, the, uh, the good news, the upper deck here is very similar to a lot of things that you see in a lot of other RVs. That is nice. It's a porcelain stool. I was very happy with the, um, not just the leg room, but the elbow and shoulder and hip room around this thing. You can actually, uh, you know, when it's time to make use of them butt napkins, you can actually take care of yourself in this one here. Then there's the little things. I wanted to specifically start in the bedroom and face back in the bathroom so that you could catch little things like the extra linen cabinet space up here the extra little stuff rockwood does and i say extra because we're about to see what i'm going to call the primary linen cabinet and i think i would actually call that like the the toiletries cabinet up there the extra soaps and body washes i think that's where i would put that stuff and of course like all rockwood travel trailers and fifth wheels up here you get one of those big xl vent fans complete with the roof vent cover of course that's a four speed high uh high velocity exhaust by the way it'll suck the hair right off your head i mean For real, for real, guys. Either that or um, it may actually be genetic male pattern baldness. Uh, fun random fact is uh, uh, actually the, uh, the lady of the house, it's mom who possesses the baldness gene who passes it down. It just typically is more commonly expressed in boys. How weird is that? Anyway, over here in the shower, if you're going to boondock, we got the shower miser system over here. And I was talking about toiletries. I love that Rockwood actually gives us like soap bottle holders over here 
Because, as I say all the time, these little shelves they stick out, that ain't even good enough for a bar of soap. It sure ain't good enough for shower beers. And if it ain't good enough for shower beers, it is not going to hold your pantene. It's going to be falling on the floor, making a mess, and you're going to be banging your head trying to find it. But you know where you're not going to be banging your head? Is in that shower. Some people don't like radius showers uh, for a more limited elbow room as compared to rectangular showers. But you notice with my head all the way against the sidewall. This has a six and a half foot sidewall here. Even when you do step into the shower pan, you still got the vaulted ceiling, all that headroom here. I did not have to stand at the top of the, uh, the ceiling vault to have good headroom in this one. That is one of the things I really, really like about it. And then over here, you see that, uh, that larger stainless sink, uh, that extra little kick of counter space to the left there, very handy. And um, down here, it's not massive, but that might be just enough for like some toothbrushes and whatnot. You know, any any little thing is better than no thing, of course. And then naturally, we've got our, uh, you know, medicine cabinet as we roll our way up here. Now, there is, of course, a sliding pocket privacy door that will close off the bathroom from the bedroom. And as we step up here, uh, I, I want to make known that these uh, are, you can build them 50 amp. And uh, that means that they're second air ready. And it is very, very possible that we will stock some of those with a second air conditioner in stock here at Halid RV. That is one of those things that really seems to vary in terms of what people like regionally. So uh, any feedback you're willing to offer there, one air or two, also please let me know where you live or where you camp so that I have a good bead on kind of what kind of customers looking for what sort of equipment. Now with that sliding privacy door, they were not able to do a TV hookup across from the bed. They have one on the wall over here. So if you're going to put a TV in the bedroom, make sure you mount it on a swing arm. Now notice like Jayco offers a couple different decors and I like them, but their bedroom and their bathroom never change. With a Rockwood, you get the same decor through the entire RV. The bedroom will look very different if you get the uh, the other wood tone package, for instance. Now, something that's going to be a major deal for a lot of people is that is a 60 by 80 true queen. And because this is a north-south bed, uh, it means you have more room to walk around it. That's one of the things with a bed slide. A bed slide looks great, but you actually have to kind of crawl into the bed a touch. Now, I talked about inverters. The um, Both of those headboard mounted outlets are wired to the inverter. So if you're going to boondock but run a CPAP machine, you can actually breathe well at night. In the kitchen, you saw solid surface. Uh, basically, the rest of the uh, countertops, though, will be that kind of sealed edge press membrane material. And there is storage down here. Actually, let's open that up and start working our way around. You notice, though, it doesn't have hanging side closets. Instead, when we get over here into the slide out, you see that there's actually really good dresser storage in this, as well as hanging storage in the closet itself, which is basically pure closet space, or uh, well, wardrobe slide, as it were. And then, of course, we have the storage below the bed, uh, which, I mean, you know, extra totes or fold-away chairs or stools or, I don't know, like, what would you guys put down there? How would you move into this thing? I love learning that kind of thing. Any feedback you can offer? Again, I'm looking for all of it in this video. And I think I'm going to call that slide out poly pushy pants because it comes right up here and starts pushing right on the edge of that queen bed. But if you had to for an overnight cracker barrel stay over or whatever, you could still get into that bed. You might have to climb into the one side and kind of do that thing where you bring your knees up to your chest and kind of slide your feet into the covers. You know what I mean? You ever do one of those? Like a, like a sleeping bag that isn't unzipped. But if you really had to, you could do that. Now, bathroom remains travel accessible. What question really becomes, though, you know, what about the lower deck? And with this one, you maintain great uh, snack-tastic access to the uh, the kitchen and the refrigerator. But, I mean, there's just, there's no bones about it. With that door being over on the driver's side and that, and that nice deep kind of, well, it is a super slide. It's just a very unconventional super slide you do straight lose access to the bunks. Now, one other little uh, tidbit I want to give you here is you should actually travel with that dinette table in the down position. You definitely don't want to leave a, uh, a floating table like that standing up when you start going down the road. That The, the top-heavy nature of that table by the time you take a couple corners or something like that or have to stab the brakes because somebody cuts you off at an intersection, that thing would bounce around and smash into something. The last thing I want to see happen is gouging up the cabinetry or maybe smashing the glass front on that fireplace. And the first thing you get to do when you get to your destination is sweep out some broken glass. Nobody nobody wants to have that happen. So this is one of them cases. A little ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You're welcome. Now, it had been raining like a son of a gun all morning. Actually, 
Uh, the rain and some high wind advisories have shut down new RV arrivals for the remainder of the day in which I'm recording this. Uh, so I, I hope you appreciate the fact that uh, I'm out here freezing my little skinny chicken fingers off getting you this footage today. I was very fortunate. I cashed in some karma points with Mother Nature and I said, could you please, please not rain like crazy for the next couple minutes so I can get some footage of this camper? And thankfully, good old girl that she is, she agreed. Now, once again, what we're looking at here today is the standard base exterior on one of these Rockwoods, which which looks fantastic. It doesn't look like that, <laughs> what people sometimes call old man tan, at least not to me, because they've still put some decent graphics on it and whatnot. It's got some good contrast, especially against this just dreary gray southern Michigan sky we have today. But there is the optional white and graphite exterior package on this that'll exchange the champagne base coat for a white and those deep chocolate accents for uh, that uh, graphite that I mentioned. And then your uh, a couple of your decals, they go from kind of a, uh, I don't know, a light brownish to like an orange accent just to spark up a little color. Now it is just kind of, uh, how do I want to say this? Drizzly Adams out here. <laughs> you can see just that tiny little bit of drizzle. So pardon me, as we go through, I've kind of got myself prepped and I'm gonna close this all up behind me, but I didn't want you to miss that large pass-through compartment down there. Very good for a fifth wheel of this size. I suppose it also allows us to showcase the slam latches and the magnet holdbacks that you have on these. Vertically opening doors like that, Rockwood is very good uh, about the, uh, the magnet holdbacks. Interestingly, they actually do not include them on the camp kitchen door back there, which, I mean, well, I already said this, interesting <laughs> to me. <laughs> the quads stable step on these, it's one of those David Blaine magic steps where it'll hold itself up. What's kind of nice about that is you don't have to worry about it like accidentally falling on the kids or the dog or anything. And that is an anti-slam door, which was doing its job earlier today with the wind that we've had. It was not flapping around and banging around in the breeze here. Now that little mini bracket that you're looking at right there, that is a little outside TV hookup. Should you choose to get an extra TV, you can mount on that thing. And this is where we're seeing behind the, uh, the, the fireplace, since this doesn't have a televator, there's an extra little pocket. Now that's really all it is, is just a little pocket. And to give you kind of a reference point, these are the little brackets that go on the griddle, which you're going to see in the cardboard box currently. Um, it, it's not massive, but it's enough where like if you, I think you could put your picnic table stuff right there and uh, it would work pretty well. And once again, I do apologize. Thank you for letting me close stuff up as I go here. Down below, we have not just the Goodyear Endurance radials. What you're not seeing is the factory supplied tire pressure monitoring system so that you have increased peace of mind that uh, you know, you've got good tires behind you. Plus you've got the best tires uh, available out there. That's arguable, I think a lot of people tend to agree with that. What you may notice though, is if you look between those tires, you see nothing but daylight on the other side because Rockwood does not use a leaf spring suspension. Now, um, in travel trailers, there are few builders that use a torsion axle and suspension system like this. In fifth wheels, it is virtually exclusive to Rockwood. There's probably one or two specialty little guys that do it. But if you're not familiar with the difference, a torsion axle and suspension system right there, it will ride and handle so much more nicely and very great if you need to like jackknife into a parking space. Uh, there's that little griddle I was telling you that's included with this and it's actually kind of interesting. Rockwood gives us the opportunity to cook the burgers and the brats and the side dishes all at the same time without smoking yourself uh, out of the inside of the RV. What's actually kind of cool about that is the fact that it's basically on a drawer runner glide. So when you're not using it, it's not in the way and you don't have to like reach inside of there where it's inconvenient to access. The other thing that's really cool about that is since it's basically on a drawer runner glide, if you didn't want that little two burner cooktop right there, it is extremely easy to just slide it out of there and use that for storage without actually changing any of the construction of the RV. So when you go to resell it, you can just be like, yep, here's your grill, enjoy. Or of course, you can always just tuck all that stuff away. Or again, if you're not gonna use it as a camp kitchen, just use it as storage. There's still going to be a gas grill quick connect down there, or as I like to call it, the propane cooker hooker. Although it is dangerously close to the backside of the RV and when the gas comes out the backside, we all know that's called a propanus. Uh, on the rear wall here, which is laminated by the way, this is a uh, all aluminum skeleton product. And then anything that is um, load bearing on the inside, like say that dinette, they will build um, with a uh, aluminum skeleton, same as the, the master bed. They will build that with an aluminum skeleton as well. Then if we get down here, 
This is a little chunk of space under the bunks, which once again, they're load bearing, so they're built with aluminum. They just didn't want it to go to waste. And that's a big Rockwood thing I like to say. No space gone to waste. They make sure they utilize every little nook and cranny they can. Now, sometimes, like in the bunk room, where you have the ladder and the drawers and the TV hookups, it can be argued that they kind of get in their way. But at the same time, I would personally, and, and I'm open to feedback on this, but I would personally rather have a manufacturer give me more features and maybe I can only use one or two at a time, then give me only one feature and say, well, this is all you get. I prefer that they gave me the choice on how I want to use it, kind of like that laundry room, you know? Now, did you notice behind the refrigerator in that big, deep kitchen slide, it didn't go all the way to the wall. Like, the fridge is not quite that deep. That's because Rockwood opened up some extra storage on the outside here. Now, interestingly, that is what I call endoscopy storage, where if it looks like you're going to get an endoscope, one of those little snake-shaped cameras, it actually goes all the way up that wall. So you may ask yourself, well, uh, why didn't they then go ahead and give us a bigger door? And the short answer is because you'd never be able to reach it. They made sure that you have a door that you can still reach from the ground. You don't need a ladder on the outside to get to your storage. Ironically, as I've said, you might want to a small you know two or three stepper on the inside to be able to access all that storage now over here you saw the drawers under the u dinette should you choose to buy one of these with the u dinette feature you can see right here how this has uh that again all aluminum skeleton but i love how rockwood uh puts a door on the outside to reach that rear bench and you saw how it was carpetless they don't only do that where you can see it the um marine style flooring that goes down on these that actually goes down before anything else so everything is built on top of that there's no just like raw wood exposed areas and every single door we've looked at today whether it's all those little baggage doors uh the uh the uh pass-through doors the main entry door they are all key to like you only need one key to access everything in this RV. And thankfully, Rockwood does give you two of them, uh, you know, so you don't gotta worry about only losing one key, but it's just another simpler, easier feature. Come on now, Wind. I had you staged open for just a minute. Don't start doing that to me. I guess in a way it's nice you get to see it move because you get to see it is a full thickness laminated door. It's not just a skin, which means absolutely no insulative quality down there. We've got our privatized docking station, as is very common, with black tank flush, and you see an outside utility shower with hot and cold. Over here is uh, controls for the optional automatic leveling. And that uh, gray box over on the left, that is the inverter that comes with the solar package. Now, something I really want you to keep in mind on this one is uh, when you get the 12-volt fridge, you automatically get the solar and inverter package. And you can expand the solar. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute because the wind has died down enough. I may actually get up here on the roof of this one, even though I probably shouldn't. I tend to do stupid things on a regular basis. My family will confirm that. Um, but if you get a two-way fridge, if you don't get the 12 volt fridge, you can still get the solar package. It's just a separate option. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, I love the look of these. You know, it, it doesn't matter which exterior, they have again and really i think frankly against that ugly sky this thing really stands out in stark contrast it just it feels timeless sitting here to me and no matter which exterior you get you standard get the turning point hitch which is a pivoting pin box so uh if you have a really short bed pickup that may save you uh the need to get some expensive slider hitching one other thing I want to talk about here before we go upstairs. Well, I'm sorry. I always think of more when I say that. I say one, and then I think of like five more things. Um, these are available with optional slide awnings. Uh, there are some people that specifically will order RVs without them. Again, I wanted to build this a couple different ways, and I wanted to build this very, very differently from how we see our normal Rockwoods to show you the different options. But no matter what, you have an enclosed underbelly with a radiant barrier and 12-volt tank heaters on every single holding tank of every single Rockwood travel trailer and fifth wheel. I'm sorry, quick clarification, because otherwise I'll get myself in hot water here. Every tandem axle Rockwood travel trailer and fifth wheel has an enclosed belly with a radiant barrier and 12 volt tank heaters on every single holding tank standard. Not the Geo Pro single axles, they just don't have an enclosed underbelly, but you can still get holding tank heaters on them. Standard now, actually. 
And I'm glad we're up here on the roof because you get to see, no matter what sidewall color package you get, you always have a lighter, brighter roof membrane, which helps keep more sunshine out of this. Now, I'm not blind to the fact that they do use some black uh, roof fixtures here and there. I think it's primarily for cosmetic reasons, just to kind of give it a specific look, you know? Um, but the, the, the fact is you have far more square footage of roof and slide roof coverage than you do say just like the uh the the shrouds or the covers on things if i was going to be picky like if you're like yeah i just i i don't like that black ac shroud all you got to do is talk to your salesperson here at halid rv and i mean you see they make white ac shrouds if you look around at the sea of inventory that we have here we can always you know get you something else that's always a possibility now um the uh roof panel package remember what we're looking at here is the 190 watt variety there is an option where if you wanted to you could always add a second roof panel from the factory or we could apply one here for you um not to mention the fact that this is still prepped for a portable side mount plug so if you want to go with a two-way fridge and get all the solar juice in the world going on this i think you could actually build this to be a, a, a pretty beefy boondocker and I tell you folks, if you have no specific feedback to offer in this video whatsoever, at the very least, if you appreciate that even out here in this nasty weather, I'm up on the roof getting you some footage, at least hit the like button or just leave me a little note to say, thanks for the effort, Josh, man. I'd appreciate it because this is like gut check, embrace the suck kind of weather, you know? Okay, so this is the part of the video where I turn into Jerry Maguire and I say, help me help you. Uh, I don't know if he quite made the crazy eyeballs or anything like that, but you get the idea. Um, I, I've given you a lot of different information as to the different options, the different equipment packages that are available on this, the different seating arrangements, refrigerators, all that stuff. If you haven't done so, please take a moment to like s type out real quick um, how you would like one of these built or any feedback that you have on this because uh, this is such a different model and I can see it working in so many different ways, but there's only so many configurations you can pack into this one. It's kind of one of those where this is, I feel almost like a give and take model. And I, and I'd really love to know, like if we can identify a, a consistent thread, uh, on like, here's what the most people are looking for. I would love to know that. Thank you very much for any feedback that you're willing to offer. Uh, short of that, remember, uh, we will have this in stock in a couple different configurations as the season goes on here, uh, unless we can identify a certain way of doing this. And if uh, so, so if you don't like what this looks like in this video, just call our team. Chances are we've got something different on hand, and we can always get something else for you built more to your preferences if you don't like what you see here or what we have on hand. We're kind of flexible that way. So when you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.